I built a lot of Webflow apps this year, including three that are available in the App Store. And today I'm gonna to share with you my GitHub template repository to spin these up really quickly with Svelte, TypeScript, Vite, and Cloudflare workers. Hey there, Webbay. The repo I'm talking about is the Webflow app mono repo here. I will put the link to this in the description below, but let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna use this template and create a new repository. So this video is gonna be a walkthrough of how I would spin up a new app and kind of all the features that are available in this template mono repo. Okay, so this is our create new repository page. I'm gonna include all branches and that's because I have a Svelte 5 preview branch that I may wanna show you here at the end of the video. But right now we're using Svelte 4 because Svelte 5 is not out yet. So let's just call this um, YouTube demo and it doesn't need a description. So we'll go ahead and also select an owner. That's just me. And yeah, we can make it private for now, but let's go ahead and create this repository. All right, that just took a few seconds now. If you know how to clone a GitHub repository, then you can just get the URL here. Otherwise you can also open with GitHub desktop. So let's go ahead and do that. And yeah, I'm gonna put it in this test folder called YouTube demo. So let's go ahead and clone it down to our local machine. All right, it's been cloned down to the local machine. Now I'm gonna press this open in Visual Studio Code button. And this is where we're gonna have the time to walk through everything available in this boilerplate repo. All right, first thing I like to do is to head over to the readme and read the instructions. And we can see clone this repo, we've already done that. And we need to first install with PMPM. So I'm expecting you to have both PMPM and the Webflow CLI tools installed for this repo to work. And then we're gonna use PMPM run dev. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit command J. That brings up a terminal here right in VS Code, and I'm gonna say pmpm install, and it's gonna go through and install all of the packages that are included in this mono repo. All right, so that's done. Now let's type pmpm run dev, and this is gonna do three things. It starts up our common package, our client, which is the designer extension, and the server. And now it actually looks like it failed because it did not resolve common, so let's just build common separately, and I'll see if I can fix this by the time uh, this video is launches, but we'll say, so we'll go ahead and CD into our packages directory and then into common here. And here we have the command pmpm run build. And if you wanted to find that yourself, you just go to packages over here, common and the package.json. And we see we have this build command which runs TypeScript and the build command right here in watch mode. So now we can change directory out of this and we're back in our root directory YouTube demo. So now let's run pmpm run dev. Okay, so we see it's firing up our designer extension server. It's firing up our, uh, this is the common package and then also the Cloudflare worker. Now let's go ahead and look at this localhost 1337. This is our Vite app. So it's spinning up right here. We see we have the client package and we have a couple of buttons right here. So we can increment count. This is just using Svelte right here. But if I open up console, we'll go ahead and see that there's going to be an error. You must be running within Webflow in order to use this extension. So any, the send notification is going to have a reference error because Webflow is not defined in this environment, which is just our browser. It needs to be in the Webflow app environment. So here in Webflow, I will assume that you've added the app to your integrations tab within your designer, and it can be any app really. Um, I'm just going to use one that I've already built. So placeholder bay, and we have the development URL right here. So let's go ahead and launch that development app. We see we get the exact same thing here. We can still increment count. And let's go ahead and send the notification now and we get that Webflow toast notification. Hello from the client package. And we also have these ping example routes one and route two. Now, what is this? So we're running Cloudflare workers on our local development server right now. And that's this one here, the localhost 8787. So let's go ahead and open this in our browser. And we see that when we go to this route, which is just the slash route, we get an object back with the message, hello world. So how did we define this? So I'm going to close down the terminal here. Our server is still running locally. And let's go ahead and open up the server and come into the source and then index.ts. And we can see here when we're getting the slash endpoint, we're just returning c.json of object. Now, what is object? Object is returning whatever example function invocation returns. And we see the example function comes from our common package. So this is why we had to install that common package as well. So common is right here. If I come into source and then main, we see that example function returns that object that we got at the default route of a message with the string hello world. And what's cool about this common package with TypeScript is that we can import the example function to our server. So we, we saw that in our server right here in the index.ts, and we could use it in our client, which is the designer extension. So if I come into app.svelte here, we can see example function is also coming from common, so we can reuse code both in our client and our server. 
This gives us a lot of really cool benefits when using a monorepo setup because we can have TypeScript safety from end to end between the client and the server. And now here we see we're creating a client of here we're using the Hano client package and that gets example route one and example route two with the local server address. Let's go ahead and put in our localhost uh, 8787 because this is when we want to call right now and then I'll get into what I was using there earlier. So we'll save that. And now back in our app, I'll click ping example route one and we see we get hello web bay. What if I ping example two? I get the requested ID one, two, three. So we can see we can communicate here with the Webflow package or with our Cloudflare worker via route one and two, or just create a Svelte UI component. So that's what these demos are all showing. Now Webflow does really want you to use HTTPS instead of HTTP for your local server. So that's what I have right here with local can. Um, let's go ahead and set up the local server here. So now I'm using local can, which is my favorite way of setting up these HTTPS tunnels um, so that my localhost 8787 is being redirected to an HTTPS route of AI alt uh, 51.localcan.dev. So that's what I'm copying here. And then back here is what I have here. So back on the app, I'm doing the exact same thing, but this time I'm using HTTPS instead of HTTP. Now let's just walk through the rest of the client and the server code real quick so that you know what's going on and then the possibilities are endless as far as what you wanna do with this and the app that you want to create. So we see we have our example function being invoked here and we're just logging the test. So if you opened up the console, you would see that. Uh, we have our notify function here, which triggers that Webflow toast. And we have our ping example one function here and our ping example two function here. Now we see that our client example one dot get, this is that type safe um, API that we're talking about. So the client is talking to the server and it knows that it takes a query of a name and a string. So I'm passing the name WebBay here. And then the response it knows is going to look as a certain JSON. So I can await that response and then webflow.notify the data.message. It's gonna say, hello, WebBay, right? And we can verify that if we come to our server down here. So we'll go to index. And then this is our example route one is a get uh, route and we're getting this example one route. And here we're validating what's coming in using Zod here to validate it. So we wanna make sure that we're getting an object that has a name as a string. And that's part of the query parameter. So not part of the body, which is a different header that I'm talking about. And then we will go ahead and extract the name off of the query. And then we'll just return a JSON with a message property that says hello, and then the name. So we're seeing how our server we could do anything with our database here or anything server side actions that we want to run and then return it back to our client, in this case, our Webflow designer extension. And then similarly, we have example route two. And here I'm just showing you how to put parameters within your routes. So here we're passing the ID. And if we go back and then we're, and then we're returning similarly a JSON with a message that says you requested the ID and then the ID there. So let's head back to our client and see what ID we are passing. So I'm going to app.svelte and notice we're passing one, two, three to example two route right there. Now, finally, we have our templating syntax within the client package here. So here's where we're defining all those buttons. We're logging out the message here just to the screen. So ping example route one, ping example route two, and then our counter here, our Svelte counter. So Svelte is really powerful at making reactive UIs. If I come into the lib folder here and see counter.svelte, we see we're declaring count, which is a number. And then we have this increment function. And when the button is clicked, we increment count. So just a really simple counter, the most basic use case of Svelte here. Now, finally, I'll touch on that common package real quick. So we have in this source here, we saw the example type and the example function. And what's cool about this is that we could export these and use them in both the client and the server and not have to like redefine them in two places. So we have one source of truth with this common package. And now what we can do is CD into packages into the client and run PMPM PM run build. And we'll go ahead, we'll see that some stuff is being made here and it's this bundle.zip file within our client. So this is what you would upload to Webflow that has all your app client code in it. And then the other thing we can do is change directory and go into our server. And here we could PMPM PM run build as well. Oh, it's not PMPM PM run build, it's PMPM PM run deploy. And this is going to use Wrangler to deploy our worker to the Cloudflare workers um, dashboard. So here's the address of our deploy trigger. So I can just click onto this and we can go ahead and open it. 
and we see we get the hello world route or the just the the default route there. So I would suggest giving your server a unique name. You can see for some of my other apps like Asset Bay and Placeholder Bay, I have those production workers here, but here would be our server. This is the edge serverless instance that runs all of our code that we need to run server side. Now, lastly, when we went ahead and cloned this template, I wanted to include all branches. And that's because if we, well, let's CD back to the root directory and then we can get, check out Svelte 5. And we see we have a Svelte 5 branch. And now if I come to package.json, we see we have Svelte is the 5.0, again, it's not ready yet. Next, um, we could then pmpm install this and run Svelte 5 code using the new dollar sign state syntax. I had to go ahead and restart VS Code, but now if we look in counter.svelte, we see we're using the dollar sign state syntax uh, that Svelte 5 offers us, and it's very similar looking code. There's no colon here between on and click, it's just the on click attribute. But if we go ahead and pmpm run dev, it's gonna fire up, remember our designer extension, our server and the common package in watch mode. And we'll come on back to our app here. And now we can increment count. It's working the same, it just uses new Svelte 5 runes. Now, another cool thing about this package is that we're using Xatom Dev's Webflow app hot reload, which lets us run HMR with V so that when we make changes to things like CSS or our HTML, it's live updated. We don't have to refresh the app. So let me show you that here. So if I just bring this down and bring this over, and I come here. So let's go into our counter and let's add some exclamation points and save and it automatically updates. I haven't triggered anything. And so we could do any sort of style, um, what uh, button, yeah, sure, whatever it's suggesting and our CSS is updating right away. So super powerful here to have HEMR and really boost how quickly you're shipping these apps. Now, let me know what you think. I know it's kind of a lot for somebody who may be new to coding, but learning all these technologies really help me level up and start shipping apps faster. And if you do want to start building apps, I recommend you come to my Patreon and check out this Webflow app like the Pros Collection. This is really valuable. It teaches you how to build a Webflow app from scratch. We'll build this pattern selector that then injects a div with like a CSS pattern on it inside of Webflow. And in there, the very first lesson is actually the project setup and developer experience where I start from a blank VS Code project and show you how I build everything so that I have TypeScript, Svelte, Vite, and Cloudflare workers all running in there. So I think you'll find that really valuable. Go ahead and check that out and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.